Hi guys, I'm back and I'm back with a new tutorial and guess whom we're doing today? Well, it's none other than Huda Beauty herself. So unless you've been living under the rock, you would definitely not know Huda Katan, Mona Katan. And guess what? They're coming up with a new perfume and the name is K Alley, as cool as it sounds. I so want to try it. And if you guys haven't tried it, you could totally head to shop Huda Beauty and try it out. Anyway, what am I talking about? This tutorial is about how to sketch, not about how to apply fragrances. So, um, let's start. So, for those of you who've been watching my tutorial since quite a while would definitely know that I make separate base layers for every element and here in this tutorial you can see that we have four different main elements which are the hair the skin the clothes and the perfume which we'll be doing in the end and there's a fifth element which is like not very important we could usually do it in the end or just leave it however it is or just not do it at all which is the background anyway so after i'm done with the base layer of everything base layer is basically plain paint that does not involve any shading or anything so after that is done I usually move on to making a separate layer for the skin shade, hair shade and cloth shade. And if you don't know what order to put it in, let me just tell you. So, well, uh, something that comes on the top is the hair and hair is capable of coming all over your sketch. Sometimes you want to have flying hair, uh, sometimes you want to have non-breezy hair just, that is just constant. So, I prefer putting the skin shade and base on the lowest followed by the clothes shade and after that you have the hair shade so basically the layering is going to be skin clothes and then hair and on top of that we're going to have the perfume bottle and in the end we're going to make the background so which is a very optional thing if you want to do it if you don't want to do it it's all up to you so now we have done a basic shade for the skin as you can see and i've already done a little highlighting done a little blush and you can always rewind the video to go and check out how to do it it's actually pretty simple if you've been painting in reality you can definitely digital paint anything and everything but remember guys if you want to shade the skin you have to be two tones close just keep skipping one one tone and applying color so that you know which is best and for instance your color is turning out well too dark or too emphasized but you're trying to shade again and again you could always work with opacity guys that is literally the most heavenliest feature photoshop has given you is opacity control that and everything will be controlled well that's a mastery again so if you keep practicing you're going to be able to do that in like well a short amount of time the lips we're doing the lips now and i prefer keeping the lips very simple or people want to detail it like every detail of the lips but i prefer doing like a quick mock-up so i've given like only three layers for the lips that is like a base a shade and a shine layer and if you want you could always add a color layer which is basically a layer that kind of um sort of emphasizes on the skin tone of the lips so that's when you play with color for that coming to the eyes guys well they sure have pretty eyes and if you check the tutorials on they have amazing eyeshadow tutorials too i love the way they do their eyes in fact i love the way all these makeup artists do their eyes it's just amazing how you can drag so much emphasis to your eyes have you guys ever tried makeup well if you haven't then you should already do it because if you do that i so 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 can give it to you in written that your digital art is going to be far better if you do makeup than when you don't do makeup because technically when i start doing makeup i start learning all the undertones of the skin and the highlighting areas of the skin which were not quite very familiar to me before and knowing these areas has definitely helped me improve on my um skill of digital art 
and for that matter i've become a little more quicker a little more sure but i definitely have a long way more to go for improvement and there's no sort of people around me who can inspire me oops why are we going off topic okay let's get back and here we've done we're almost done with the skin well we are already done with the skin and now we're coming to the clothes so as you can see i have a common dress stitched for both these sisters but i'm not doing like a very wrap wrap thing and i want like some subtle shine over it i'm not a very good with fabrics person you don't have to be a very good with fabrics person just because i said you have to be good with makeup to be good with dish lot you definitely don't have to be good with fabrics to be good with dish lot but yes knowing fabrics can definitely help you improve on your art so anyway the fabric i'm trying to create here is not very blingy it's subtle it's shiny but definitely not so bling in your eyes and it's not very loud it's subtle and nice so um it's a very sequence type of effect that i'm trying to create here and for that i'm going to be doing and using the technique of layering which is definitely so important so easy to use you definitely use three layer three to four to five layers whatever you can it depends on your colors actually here i've taken light and dark shades of the same color and i will also be exploring with different colors as in like how you can see now a tinge of purple all of a sudden and then guess what i'm going to use a tinge of blue as well after i'm done with this dark thing so yeah a tinge of blue definitely pops out your design and well you can see it's so prominent all of a sudden i'm going to subtleize it using a purple shade cool right well it's very easy to do it if you keep layering and if you find it difficult to do it you can definitely do it in separate layers i however have gotten used to it so i do it in the same layer this is absurd line i want to show shadow through which you don't have to do but you could try different techniques i would however like to separate the front sheet from the back and yes so i have given like a little shadow a little prominent shadow actually and after that we're going to come to the most exciting part oh yeah in case if you want to give some pink light you can always do that so in case you're thinking that's highlighter that's actually pink light which looks well if it's highlighter it's going to be a little more light pink baby pink but since it's a light i'm going to use like a little dark pink as you might have seen for the skin coming to the hair the most exciting part of course ladies love 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 grooming hair hair is like uh, a major 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 element of how you look and project yourself your hairstyle talks a lot and for these two chic ladies i'm giving them contrasting hairdos although mona katan has a different hairstyle presently i'm going to go with her old hairstyle just so that the hair can contrast i'm showing that we i'm going to be showing you two different hairstyles two different hair looks for both these ladies you could just see this tutorial and learn so as you can see for mona katan i'm giving a more brown hazel chestnut mix hair and for now i'm just doing the undertones which is a darker shade of brown and for huda katan i want to keep her hair black and i'm going to give her dark blue hair lights which is going to look so contrasting to mona katan's hairdo and also very good in the final look so you could also play with the element of contrast in your artwork it really helps pop things out guys you could definitely try that i can give that to you in written so try it and let me know definitely leave that in the comments below if it works and like you can see now i'm making hair strands and if you have photoshop 2018 cc it's easier for you to make hair strands neat hair strands i'm talking about because you have the smoothing layer and push that to about 62 to 70 and you have these smooth strokes that get 
dragged along and now i'm going to follow this up with a darker color of brown just to add a little color because before that you could have seen that it was like very plain and there was an element of texture but i want to add some shadow to it so you can definitely add a little colored brown and well if you're confident enough you could definitely experiment with reds and all sorts of hues but i have to recreate the same look keeping in mind you could definitely use a reference picture for that matter even i use reference pictures but i'm more of a see and do person so if you see me for real you're going to be seeing my phone having the reference picture on and me working on the tablet and laptop with a separate reference picture you could also underlayer your a uh, reference picture under the well between the base and the shade so you get an idea of where the undertones and where the highlights come up of the skin and not just the skin but that works for the hair and dress and everything no matter what reference you're taking so like i said red it is it needs a little experimenting so the kind of red you're going to take and if it actually complements the colors your mixing it with and so that subtle red worked out the best for me and i think her hair looks gorgeous now and when i say her i mean mona katan cuz obviously her hair is done <laughs> now we're going to start with huda's hair and i'm doing the undertones right now which is with a comparatively darker color darker than well i have this dark blue put on as the base so i'm taking a, a darker blue for the hair strands and giving a texture Now I'm going to switch to a little black so I can work with shadows. Shadows, my friends, are really, really, really important because if you get the shadows and the highlights and the shine right, I think your final look is going to be gorgeous. And a little blue, like I said, with a reduced opacity, and you could try different effects. That means if you have it in different layers, it's going to be. different effects for the hair do so now her hair look like they have slightly subtly blue highlights which don't pop out all of a sudden but they're there and they're not there too and guys don't forget the lashes the lashes are so very important especially when you're doing beauty bloggers totally well that just reminds me that uh i used to have such thick lashes in school and now all of a sudden they've just kept falling 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 but yeah mustard oil works really well if you apply a little oh no don't try mustard oil on your eyes but any kind of oil that doesn't burn your eyes could definitely go well with your lashes so yeah oh yeah the nail paint the nail paint is really easy you just need to use three tones and you'll be done with your nail paint and work with a lot of opacity for that matter Oh yes, coming to the fun part that is the perfume bottle itself. I usually don't do things other than humans, but when I do, I get really excited and as you can see the bottle isn't showing, that's going to make it a little hard. And I have a reference picture as you may have seen in the background. Place between the base and the shade layer. So it makes it easy for me to just switch, check off it and get back to illustrating like you may be already seeing that i'm switching it on and off very often just to know what where is the shade what color i should be using just to get an idea but these things are just to get an idea you can always have your own style of doing things differently color the bottle differently whatever but since i'm making a specific product i have to stick to what i see There are a lot of artists who actually do glass very well, and this is how I do glass though. But I've been experimenting a lot with glass, and if you really work out with opacity and different brushes, you could create magic, my friends. Like literally magic things that look so 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 gorgeous. It's if you see this bottle in reality, it's gonna be so pretty. and i'm trying to replicate the exact prettiness on digital well i'm going to use a little bottle green or like sea blue or whatever you call this color to do the cap of the bottle because i think this color complements best with the white
it has a really diamondy well not exactly diamondy it, it doesn't give you that sparkling effect it's subtle again and it looks like it's a plastic cap diamond it's not very glit glams because obviously the real bottle is a little glit glams but i'm not going to touch the glit glams effect for now i'm just going to keep it subtle but the bottle will be prominent if you see the final look and now coming to its gold cap from down well it's not exactly a cap but like the mid part of the bottle i'm sorry i'm so bad with the technical terms of bottles uh. <laughs> so anyway when you're working with golds and bronzes and everything that's gonna be so easy like if you could base your um gold and then overlay it with the shade layer of an orange but uh, make sure that if you're working with something that involves gold like now you can see I can, I'm putting a shine make sure you do it in different layers so it doesn't really affect when you want to make major changes and so I'm done with a lot of the bottle and now you can see I'm coming to the glass shine part which is actually very important it just gives a little more detail to the bottle and if you talking about the logo if you don't have a png you can always create the logo that's not going to be an issue you could always use a reference picture and replicate the logo and if it works you could always create a png whatever you're comfortable with actually but getting the stroke right the shine stroke uh, make sure your smoothening is about 70 like say 73 like i've done it it's easy and just flow well, to be honest, initially when I started working with the smoothening tool, I wasn't very comfortable with it. But as I kept working with it, I was enjoying it thoroughly. That is a sure, sure thing, guys. You will definitely enjoy it as you keep working with it. It applies to any software, any tool that you're using. Initially, you're going to be like, oh my god, this is just not, not very comfortable. But once you keep using it, you get used to it for sure. And like you can see now, I'm doing the logo. I tried using the pen tool, but it wasn't working quite much. That was quite a struggle, guys. I kept using it, kept using it. And then finally, I just had to give up because it wasn't happening. You can see how messed up it is. Well, I'm a person of a lot of patience, but this is a speed art video. So you can definitely make out the time that I wasted using the pen tool. Trying to use the pen tool because this is obviously not illustrator and it definitely won't work the same way it'll work in a different way and instead of using the pen tool i decided to use the brush tool and overlay it on the logo simply see how easy this is well i don't know why the pen tool doesn't work similarly in photoshop as when it works in illustrator it's a totally different system anyway go get it figured it out see how gorgeous it looks in the end and if you have more time you can definitely shade it and put a little more orange in it contrast it'll make it look good so a bg was and yeah that was just a couple of two minutes and how is the final look let me know in the comments below for seeing more of my art you could definitely check out my instagram or subscribe definitely subscribe guys if you want to see more of my tutorial videos and get to hear how i made my sketches lots of love see you soon bye darlings